It's the end of day two at Tata Steel Chess India Rapid and we have a sole leader in the women's section and a sole leader in the open section. Nana Zagnitze keeps her lead intact with half a point while in the open section we have the young Nihal Sarin leading by a full point. You can see right now it's the end of the day, everything's empty here but huge battles were fought on these five boards and I had to choose one game out of 30 games that were played today. And I thought a lot about what game should I be showing you today. And I chose the game between Humpy and Nana Zagnitze because there's a lot to learn from this. So let's have a look at this game. Humpy is playing with the white pieces, Nana Zagnitze is black. The game starts off with d4. Nana Zagnitze brings her knight out to f6 c4 e6 knight f3 b6 this is known as the queen's indian g3 bishop comes out to a6 attacking the c4 pawn b3 is played to defend it now comes a check bishop d2 bishop jumps back to e7 very typical play and now humpy plays knight to c3 angling for e4 Nana goes c6, clearly she wants to play d5 next move but Humpy goes for e4 and controls the center. In comes d5. And now Nana said that she, she was expecting queen c2 but Humpy played the move bishop d3 and here Nana was already out of her preparation. It was here that black made an error. She played the move c5 and Humpy now advantage of this really well what happened was Humpy took took and here she had 10 minutes and she took a solid six minutes in this position it's a beautiful example of how deeply you can calculate in a given position so my advice to you would be to pause the video here think about what would you do with white come up with a solution go as deep as possible because from here Humpy played simply flawless chess so what did Humpy do? She first took the pawn on d5, which is a nice move. And you might think it's a piece blunder though, because after knight d5, you can't take back your bishop on d3 is hanging. Okay, what did Humpy have up her sleeve? She played the move bishop e4. Now look at this pin. Nana could have played the move bishop to b7 and laid a small trap. Because if Humpy were to play cd5, Black has a powerful move here, f5. Now the bishop takes queen d5, attacking the bishop and the knight with this battery would be very strong. And so a better move would be to take with the bishop, bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes, when here white has a small edge in this position. But Nana was quite ambitious herself. She decided to play the move knight c7 and she told Humpy, look, if you give up your bishop here for the rook, I take back and look what have I got. I have got two pieces for a rook and you've got one pawn, but notice the weakened light squares here and white does not have a light squared bishop. Black's bishop is going to come here or maybe enter via the light squares. It's going to be big trouble here for white. But... This is where Humpy showed her class. She played the move bishop f4. She didn't go and pick up the rook. Her point is, I'm going to take the knight and after that I'll take the rook. The knight is no longer defending it. Okay, fantastic. This was done. Now Nana said, but I can just block. So that the knight cannot be taken and now the rook is defended by the knight. Once again, Humpy comes up with a tremendous move. She takes on c5. How did she even find this move? This is so good because after bishop f4, which is kind of forced, queen takes d8 check, king takes d8. She takes back the bishop here, g takes f4. And in spite of these doubled pawns here, white is clearly better. This is still hanging. It's not going anywhere. You are long castling. Think about it this way, the rook is coming to g1, the knight is coming to e5, white has complete control over the position. Here Zagnitze played the move king c8, her idea was bishop b7 trying to exchange a few pieces and, and I mean just defending her rook so Humpy took, knight takes and here 
Humpy decided to long castle. I, I believe she first went 95, takes and now she long castled. When this happened, I think black went bishop b7, rook to g1, g6 was played and now uh, here Humpy played another fantastic move f5. She pushed her pawn down the board and after knight to b6, uh, I think, one second, rook g1, the position that was reached was something of this sort. And Humpy found another nice move here, rook d6 to f6. The rook came here and we were looking at this position. So after playing really fantastic chess, we reached this position, black went knight d7, she took, rook takes. Uh, if she took with the rook, knight takes would have been better. Uh, white is completely winning here. But Zagnitze played this move. Now knight takes d7, knight takes d7, rook takes h7 happened, g takes f5 and rook goes to g7. And in this position we were like, wow, what a game by Humpy. She's just played flawless chess starting from move number 10 and we've reached somewhere around move 22 or 23. She's just kept up her advantage after bishop c6. Everyone was expecting her to start pushing the pawn. Maybe she first played rook e7, rook g8, and now just push the pawn. h4, h5, h6, and then move the rook. This pawn is just too strong. But do you know what Humpy did? She went rook g7, rook h8, rook h7, rook g8, rook g7, and everyone was shell-shocked. How did she accept a draw? You know, if she would have won this game, she would have become the sole leader of the tournament. But instead now, she's trailing by a half point uh, to Nana Zagnitze. This is a great game, a great opportunity that was missed by Humpy. But that's how things are. Tomorrow, there are the last three rounds of the tournament left. We will see if Zagnitze manages to keep up her lead and if Nihal can keep himself steady in this strong competition where world-class players are playing. For now, this is Sagar Shah signing off before this venue is closed down. Bye-bye.